So I'm very happy to be here to talk to you today about our smart editing features. So smart editing is how we refer to a collection of features that we debuted here at MAB three years ago. And they all have a goal on keeping your attention on the model that you're building and not on our tools. We want to bring the tools that you need to you in the canvas where you need them, when you need them. And we want to eliminate your busy work by automating things that we can do on your behalf. Our goal is for you to be able to edit as fast as you can think about the problems that you're trying to solve. Now, we started rolling these features out in 2014B, and we've shipped enhancements and additions to these features in every release since. So, that probably asks the question, what have we done for you lately? So, I want to show you a little bit about what smart editing features are coming in 17A and 17B. And the first set are a set of smallish features that are aimed at letting the editor pay attention to the details so that you don't have to. So starting in 17b, when you add a new block to the canvas that continues to have its default name, that name is going to be hidden on the canvas unless the block is selected. If you then go in and select the block and give it a more meaningful name, we'll, we'll keep that more meaningful name around on the canvas by default. Now, you'll still have explicit control over whether to show block names, either per block or on an all blocks basis. But we hope that by making smarter default assumptions on our part, it'll save you steps in getting your diagram to a nice readable state. We've also paid a little bit of uh, attention to create subsystem in 17b. So now, if you're working with a set of blocks and signals, and those signals will become I.O. for your subsystem, Instead of just getting generic in one, out one port names on your subsystem, we're going to pick up the, si the signal names and use those as the port names for you automatically. So they may not always be the right names, but they'll be right more often than in one and out one were. We know you use color and style in your diagrams to convey additional meaning to the people who are reading your models. So our tear off cues now propagate style information to the blocks that they create. We've also made it easy to lift the style from an element in your model and apply it to other elements in the model with just a few clicks using our new Format Painter tool. So let's talk for a second about Quick Insert. We've gotten a lot of great feedback from all of you since we shipped this in 14b, but there has been one recurring source of confusion, and that is our little inflating magnifying glass icon. People might think they have to wait for it or they have to click on it for it to work, and you don't. So since that particular UI is misleading, we're removing it in 17B <laughs> in favor of some refinements to the quick insert interaction. Uh, so if you've been accustomed to single clicking in the canvas and typing to do your quick insert, don't worry, that's still going to work. But we've also added quick insert to the double click interaction. Now, this also means we needed to make sure that we could add annotations via double click as we used to. So now it'll be presented immediately as a result when you double click. You can just hit enter and go into annotation mode. Or you can type out the text of your annotation and select create annotation from the results list and we'll insert the text that you typed. So let's talk a little bit more about this model that I'm building here. So it's a fairly simple model. Um, it has a subsystem that represents a, a pretty simple boiler. We'll just dive in there for a second. It knows how to be turned on and off and it models its temperature over time outputting it both in raw form and a, and a digital format. And I want to implement a controller for this, for this boiler using the state flow chart. So first I'm going to give the chart a more meaningful name. And you'll see that that name sticks around on the canvas as I showed you a few moments ago. And I need to add I.O. now. There are no ports on that chart. I need to add a, an output to control the state of the boiler. And I want to connect it both to the boiler and to my scope. How am I going to do that? I'm just going to drag a new connection out and I'm going to let Simulink add that port for me, and I can connect to it mid-drag. We call this automatic port creation. Now I can go ahead and branch that line to my boiler, and I've made that connection. Similarly, for inputs, I need to make sure that the controller knows what its set point is. So I'm going to just drag this set point signal over. Once again, as I get close to the block, Simulink is going to add the port for me. I can connect to it, and when the mouse comes up, you'll see that we've even named the port for you based on the signal name as we did with create subsystem a little bit earlier. Now this doesn't work just with state flow charts. This works with subsystems and a variety of other blocks, including scopes. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use automatic port creation to do the rest of the wiring at this layer of my diagram. And then we can dive into simu uh, state flow, rather, to implement the logic. So first, I'm going to go over to the symbols view. And a couple of those ports didn't have signal names that they picked up, so I'm going to give them more meaningful names. And then I'm going to add my default state, which I'll use for my boiler off uh, condition. So I know I need to transition over to the boiler being on, so I'll, I'll just drag a transition out, see what happens. And now, in 17a, our element creation queues will appear at the end of the drag. I can create either a junction or a state, and you can see that the state's automatically been named boiler on, thanks to our smart state naming features. I can just accept that and move on to actually implementing the logic of those states. Now I'm just going to fairly naively set my output value to either false for the off condition or true for the on condition. And you'll notice that I'm actually going to forget that I need to type in that this is an entry action. State flow is going to automatically correct the action language for me and insert the entry syntax uh, that I forgot to add. Then I'm going to go over to my transition. And I'm going to double click it to edit it. There we go. And now in 17b, we give you some action language cues so that if you're an infrequent or a new user of Stateflow, we'll give you some information about what the syntax is that's required for that transition. I'll click on the condition. It's inserted my square braces for me. And I can just go and type my Boolean test in. Now, if you're a more experienced user of Stateflow and you already know what action language to type, you can type exactly what you did before. The action language cues are smart enough to stay out of your way and not interfere with the typing that you've been accustomed to doing. So now I've got my logic implemented, but you can see this chart isn't necessarily all that pretty to look at. The action language is spilling out of the states. There's some overlap. So I'm going to go up to my chart menu. And under Arrange, I'm going to select Arrange automatically. And I'm going to let state flow clean that all up for me. So in very short order, I have added a controller, wired it to my plant, implemented the logic for the controller, and I've done all of that without leaving the canvas or spreading it, uh, going into other windows to look for other tools to do that. <clears throat> Another area that we've been working on is our line router. So in 16B and earlier releases, the line router always routed lines one at a time, even if we were routing multiple lines in an operation. And you can see that this doesn't make very effective use of the available space, and it leads to unnecessary line crossings. So in 17A, we've taught Quick Connect, which always routes multiple lines, to use our new channel router, which routes lines symmetrically in channels of white space. This is both faster and gives better results. In 17B, we've also exposed the channel router as a smart action so that you can manually invoke it on a set of lines that you might have routed yourself or which come from earlier versions. And if there are still too many lines in that layer of your model, our create bus action has been refined to refactor that quickly into a bus with bus element ports, reducing the number of lines on the layer and making it easier to read and easier to understand. Now, in addition to integrating channel routing with our smart action in 17B, it's also been integrated with create and expand subsystem. And we plan to continue to integrate the channel router with other automatic routing done by the editors in 18A and beyond. So these are our smart, ed smart editing features that are shipping in 17A and 17B. Uh, and we're trying to eliminate more of your busy work and bring you more tools so that you can focus on your model and edit at the speed of thought. <clears throat>